So the purpose of uh, measuring the overall level of prices in the economy is to allow us to compare dollar figures from different times. So it doesn't have to be a dollar. It could be any other currency uh, or any, any other price index. But the idea is to allow us to compare those uh, figures from different times. Now that we know how price indexes are calculated, we can try to use the CPI uh, or any other index to compare uh, dollar figures from the past to the dollar figure in the present. So the way to go about it is by using a really uh, simple formula, which says that the amount in year X dollars equals the amount in year Y dollars times the price level in year X divided by the price level in year Y. And so here what we mean by price level is some kind of an index that is like the CPI. Okay, so this is also the CPI, but in a different year. We typically use this um, formula to convert year Y dollars into year X dollars so that we can adjust for price changes uh, over the years and uh, make a comparison. So let's take an example to illustrate this point. So in our example, we are going to assume that, and actually I'm not going to assume, I will actually give you the actual numbers for the minimum wage in 1970 and in 2013. So in 1970, the minimum wage was $1.65 an hour. And in 2013, it was $8 an hour. And this is for the state of California, right? So San Francisco minimum wages would be different or federal minimum wages would be different, but this is California minimum wage, right? So can you believe it? $1.65 an hour. But can we compare these two numbers? That's our question. Um, the answer is no. We can't compare $1.65 to $8 and say, well, we're better off in, eight, in 2013 because we are earning more than what we were in 1970 or if someone else was earning $1.65 an hour in 1970. What we want to account for is the price changes. Maybe uh, prices uh, of goods and services have risen over time and in 2013 we faced uh, higher costs. So maybe this $8 is not enough. But how do we go about doing that? So one way to, do, to proceed would be to look at what is the CPI in each year. So let's write down the CPI in 2013 and in 1970. So in 1970, CPI was 38.5. And remember that this is just a number, tells you what is going on with the level of prices. And in 2013, it was 231.6. I believe the data I'm getting is looking at 1984 as the base year, but that is irrelevant for this question. What you really need to know is that prices have gone up from 1970 to 2013. Now, what we can do is ask a question, did minimum wage have more purchasing power in 
1970 than in 2013. So what we want to do to answer this question is we want to convert 1970 figures or dollar figures into 2013 dollar figures. Right? So if you look at the formula, you want to convert 1970 figures. So this becomes our Y and this becomes our X. So this is your Y, this is your X, and we can plug in the values into our formula. So this is a good time to pause the video and work it out and find out what is the amount in year 2013 dollars. So let's take a look. The amount in 2013 dollars would equal the amount in 1970 dollars times the CPI in 2013 divided by the CPI in 1970. So let's plug in the numbers. The amount in 1970 dollars, let's go back, was a dollar sixty-five an hour. This is a dollar sixty-five an hour. We can times that by the CPI in 2013, which was 231.6, and divided by the CPI in 1970, which is 38.5. And we get to a number which is nine dollars ninety two cents an hour so now the important thing is to interpret what this number means this number is the minimum wage or we can say that the minimum wage in 1970 was $9.92 in 2013 dollars. Okay. Or we can say that the dollar sixty-five minimum wage in 1970 could have purchased $9.92 worth of goods and services if prices in 1970 were the same as they were in 2013. So this is a nice illustration of how economists use this type of a formula to convert a time series of uh, current dollars into constant dollars to see how a variable has changed over time. And now since we understand this, uh, we can go back to our question. Our question was, did minimum wage have more purchasing power in 1970 than in 2013? Let's take a look at what is the minimum wage in 2013 dollars. It's, it's $8 an hour, right? So, when we converted $1970 to $2013, we got an answer of $9.92. And in 2013, minimum wage was $8. So we were definitely better off in 1970. 
right, with the 1970 minimum wage because that would have gone much further. Okay, so that's how you interpret this. The next thing we want to do is understand the differences between two types of interest rates, nominal versus real interest rates. And this is done with the help of an example. Now you're familiar with nominal versus real. You saw that in uh, the GDP video. Uh, nominal, in nominal GDP, when we construct it, we don't correct for inflation. But when we look at real GDP, we do actually correct for inflation. So let's try to illustrate this point with the help of an example. Let's assume that Myra deposits $100 in the bank today. Now, the bank might tell Myra that she would earn six percent on her deposit annually. So what we know is that the nominal interest rate is 6% because we are we haven't accounted for any price changes and if i ask you what would myra get one year from now you would say 106 Right? What we've done here essentially is we've taken $100 and we've done 1 plus 6%. Okay, so percent, 6 divided by 100, right? And uh, you'll get $106. Now, the question is, does the value of, of uh, $106 remain $106 next year? So... We'll look, take a look at different cases. The first case is if there was no inflation. That means if there was zero inflation, prices did not change from today until next year, then the value of the $106 stays But if there was a little bit of inflation, let's say there was 2% inflation, then we would not be able to extract the entire value of $106 because things became more expensive. Good, the prices of goods and services for a typical consumer would have gone up or the CPI would have gone up from today until tomorrow, uh, until one, one year from now. And so the $106 would lose some value. Okay, so how do we, how do we understand uh, how to work with this? What we can do is calculate a real interest rate. The real interest rate is just the nominal interest rate corrected for the inflation rate. Notice when the inflation rate was zero, the real interest rate and nominal interest rate would have been the same. So if we were, if the bank was offering Myra 6% nominal interest rate, the real interest rate would also be 6%. 
But in the second case, the real interest rate that Myra would earn on her deposit would be 6% minus 2%. So when next year comes, she would have only made 4% on her deposit. Okay, so that's the idea behind nominal and real interest rate. And when we look at real interest rates, we can actually say that Myra's purchasing power or Myra's uh, uh, purchasing power has gone up gone up or grown by 4%. So purchasing power is what we are really interested in. That's why we want to keep it real and talk about real variables always. Okay, that's the end of chapter 11. Enjoy.